We'll start with David Pascom. Hey, Trey, congratulations on your awards. Um, you've obviously had a remarkable career when you consider what you went through medically early on, and you've been obviously two-time SEC since. Is there any, do you have assurance that, uh, that, that you're all good to go, or do you think there's going to be any hesitation? Are you worried about any teams possibly uh, from that standpoint creeping back in just what you've gone through in the past? No, I don't have any concerns. You know, teams do their due diligence to understand uh, what I have as a prior condition. And not only that, the plan that we sustained this past season, not only is something that we could do in the NFL, but we'll have immediate success. We'll go to Orlando and then Nick Hill. Yes, Trey, D. Orlando, led better of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Uh, just checking with you to see what the teams are asking about, uh, where you might play, and how has your preparation been uh, without there being the combine and so forth? Yeah, uh, there have been a lot of teams that have talked to me about multiple positions, whether I like playing on the left or the right side, tackle or guard. Uh, and quite frankly, I can pretty much, you know, play either or whatever team needs me to play. You know, I'm going to do what I have to do for my team to succeed. Uh, in terms of, like, training and stuff, uh, I spent most of my pre-draft uh, process training in Dallas at a Michael Johnson performance uh, with a lot of guys like Drew Little, Duke Mayweather, uh, Brian McCall. Those guys just helping getting me ready for the draft. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Trey, I'm curious, have you reached out to former teammates who have gone through this draft process and what advice have they given you if you have reached out to them? Uh, I have not really reached out uh, to many teammates. Uh, I would say uh, more so just reaching out to people who already had their pro days in my class. Uh, a lot of guys I've already trained with, just asking them what they had to go through and just sort of experiencing it at the same time. It's such a, uh, it's such a weird year where a lot of this stuff is done over Zoom instead of in person. So just sort of sharing each other's experiences at times and just, you know, knowing what to expect at times when it comes down to field aspects, that's been the best part. Patrick Brown and John Wilkerson. Hey, Trey, I uh, saw where you are uh, turning your pro day into uh, a way to help others um, with, with your bench press. Could you kind of explain what you're doing and, and that process, how that, how that process kind of came about and, and do you have a, a goal number you're trying to hit when you, uh, when you get on the bench tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, just really just scrolling through social media, uh, seeing the guys like Rashawn Slater, uh, Creed Humphrey, you know, guys that I trained with, uh, saw the causes they put on their social media and quite frankly, like a little bit shortly, they reached out to me asking if I'd be willing uh, to make a post to help out uh, with different types of diseases. So, you know, first and foremost, I mean, it's something that cost me very little to simply just make a social media post. But I mean, I think it was within like an hour, maybe two hours, the, the targeted amount of money that we wanted to raise was already raised. So I think it was something that was easily done. And, you know, for them, you know, it means the world. But for us as athletes, for the platform we have, I think it's something that we should do. Uh, and in terms of how many reps of bench press, I'm just shooting for 30. Trey. Well, congratulations on doing that, always lending a helping hand. I'm curious, what have these workouts been like leading up to today? And is there any different, real difference in your getting ready for this pro day and your tryouts for the NFL compared to what your day-to-days were getting ready for Tennessee football? Yeah, uh, I mean, pro day focus and, you know, pre-draft uh, combine focus is more so uh, making sure your body is at its most optimum peak shape. Uh, when I said it, it's sort of weird, but it's more so, you know, is what are you doing every day helping to optimize your performance every day? Are you getting better? So a lot of times in the morning at MJP, go for about two hours. It could be a speed training. It could be a simple lift. Then take about an hour, two hour break. And then we go back, lift again, or it might be just a speed focus day. Then it's maximizing your recovery for the rest of the day. Uh, you know, at Tennessee, most of the times you have meetings, you know, you get one lift in, or maybe it's a, more of an agility day. Um, but I would just say in terms of like getting ready for a season after this pre-draft process is over, I started focusing on building a lot more muscle mass and a lot more power uh, in preparation for the NFL. Rick Russo, then Blake Topmeyer. Hey, Trey, good morning. A couple quick questions. What does it mean to you to get that torchbearer honor from, uh, from Tennessee? 
And then also uh, your initial, you know, being around the building, your initial impressions of the new regime under under uh, uh, new coach, Coach Heupel, and and what that's uh, what's your initial impressions of that as they come in to take over the program. Yeah, uh, with the Torchbearer Man, it is a great honor. Uh, humbled and really blessed to even receive it. Um, you know, talking about a kid who came to Tennessee's campus wide-eyed, um, not knowing, a little unsure of himself if he could get anything done. And, then, you know, God's good. Here I am saying today, a Torchbearer winner and recipient. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't do anything but just praise God and thank him for that. Um, with the new coaches, uh, I've been able to meet with Coach Heupel uh, one time, <laughs> actually walking in the weight room to meet uh, Coach Kurt. But, uh, you know, I have a really good feeling about them. They're really good people. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where Tennessee football is going to go. Hey, Trey, Blake Topmeyer with the Knoxville News Sentinel. A um, couple questions. Uh, one, what do you feel like um, you know, your best attributes are, your best selling points uh, are as, as you, you know, take your game to, to the pros? And then two, um, you know, when, whenever questions uh, about your health maybe do come up with, with, with scouts or NFL evaluators, um, what do you tell them or what do you plan to tell them, you know, to, to put any of their concerns to, to ease? Yeah, uh, for me, my son, I would say I'm a tone setter. You know, I'm not taking it from anybody. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you're not going to have one issue from me off the field. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. We're talking about a kid all I dream about is playing football in the NFL. So it's going to be my job. I'm going to take it serious. I love to be there every day. I can't wait to get back to the city that I end up landing in. Um, the other part, the piece with the medical situation, I uh, sort of alluded to it earlier. Uh, the main thing is once teams do their due diligence, and they talk to my doctors and specialists that I went across the country to go see, they'll sort of see the plan that we have set and a lot more confidence in it as well. Uh, I know it's something that we haven't been completely open about in the past due to my own privacy, but at the end of the day, it's a plan that will not only sustain itself in the NFL, but have a lot of success as well. And hopefully it will be a way to pioneer ground for people with my same issues that have blood clotting issues and things of that nature. And then you look at people like David Andrews, Russell Kuhn, you know, they've been playing and they've had very similar issues that I've had. And we're talking about very high level offensive linemen as well. David Ubbin and Mateus. Uh, Trey, on that, are you guys, is your team finding itself having to educate NFL teams on those things, like talking about Okun and Andrews and those things? Or is that something that you got to the NFL and you realized, oh, people are sort of more ready and ha are dealing with this already? Yeah, I mean, I would say educating, and that's not in a condescending way. It's more so just like telling people uh, what my situation is, how we solve the issue, and what it is going forward. And, you know, I have no problem with explaining it. You know, I can explain it a million times if I have to because it's just something unique. It's something that's different. And, you know, at the end of the day, I want to play football at a high level. I want to go to the NFL. So I have no issue whatsoever, you know, helping people understand what I went through and making them comfortable with it as well. Uh, Trey, Mateus from Time Out Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the NFL draft. Uh, you talk a lot about the, the pro day and how it's gonna big it's gonna be big for you, but you also have the chance on the senior bowl, line up with other big guys in college. What you can talk about that is that experience and how that helped you on this draft process. Yeah. Uh the senior bowl was huge, man. Uh talking about a, a prestigious bowl, or a prestigious event, and uh, just being able to participate, you know, it was an honor itself. Um I would say, you know, just in the senior bowl, a lot of learning lessons I had there. Uh, especially with technique. And I feel like as the week progressed, I got a lot better with it and I was able to master some of the things I've been struggling with. But, you know, I was extremely blessed to be in the Senior Bowl, but it was a great opportunity to help myself and be better as a player. We'll go back to Orlando, then Vince. Uh, yeah, Trey, uh, a lot of teams are, are trying to improve along the offensive line, uh, including the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, have you had any discussions with them? And, and who are some of the other teams you've interviewed with in the Zoom meetings? Yeah, a lot of teams have asked me to uh, actually keep that confidential, so I'm okay. not really able to discuss that. But uh, I have spoken with a couple of teams. Thank you. Uh, no problem. So, Trey, what is – what has been the process been like to get feedback about your game, things that teams really like about what you bring to the table and then things that maybe they have questions on or, or want to see more of what's that been like? And can you share some of those things? 
Yeah. Uh, sort of going back to what Mr. Orlando said, uh, with meeting with different teams via Zoom and that nature, uh, I try to end at my every Zoom that I have with what can I do better as a player? What can I get better at? And, you know, I have been getting feedback on certain things like hand placement, body balance, and control and over aggression. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's just about getting better as a player. And, you know, I love getting the feedback because these are the people that are going to be my future employers. So it's been really helpful in terms of my development. Chris Gordy and Alan Saunders. Hey, Trey, uh, Vince kind of took my question there, but I'm just curious. Obviously, versatility is a big thing at the next level, being able to play multiple positions. Have you had any conversations with teams about where they see you and are you willing to play multiple spots on the line at the next level? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I've had conversations like that. This is where I refer like tackle or guard and of that nature. Uh, and a couple other people just asking about different positions where I refer right or left. Alan? Yeah, I noticed, I think it was at the Senior Bowl, uh, Ramon Foster shared something of yours. I, I wondered if that was a guy maybe you've had any contact with, obviously, a Tennessee guy who was just recently retired from the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hit up Ramon right before I went to the Senior Bowl, just sort of like chopping it up with him on Twitter. Uh, and he gave me a little bit of feedback pretty much every day. So uh, Ramon's definitely a dude I look up to, a uh, West Tennessee guy, uh, someone I always heard about growing up as well. So, you know, just being able to be in communications with him and just, you know, just get knowledge and information from a veteran that played in the NFL that long. I mean, you know, I, I want to soak it up like a sponge, man. It's awesome. Gonzalo, then Eric Kane. Hey, Trey. Hey, here, Gonzalo from, from Loja de Argentina. My question is, uh, what do you think you can bring to the team that uh, we – could pick you in the, in the draft. What do you think you can improve to, to them? Yeah, uh, definitely I'll be a tone setter once again. i will be a guy that, you know, if things aren't going away or the game starts, I'm trying to be the most violent dude out there. I'm trying to set the tone from play one to the end of the game. I'm trying to be a mainstay in the offensive line for years and years and years and years and years to come. I'm not trying to get my position up either. Hey, Trey, this has obviously been a goal of yours for your entire life to play college football and go on and play in the NFL. How are you enjoying this experience in the weeks leading up to the draft? Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it just because I have the ability to talk to different teams across the country, you know, uh, just talking uh, to different organizations that, like, you know, I used to play Madden with. I mean, it's, it's a surreal experience, <laughs> um, you know, being at the Senior Bowl, being around these high-level coaches or, you know, sometimes speaking to – you know, head coaches and GMs, you know, and guys you've seen growing up as a kid. Like, oh, I remember when he coached the Super Bowl. Like, I remember family used to talk about him. And I mean, it's crazy. You know, I, I'm extremely blessed to be in this position. A lot of people thought I wouldn't be a couple years ago. But, you know, I'm just taking every day in stride, uh, thanking God for the ability to be here, but also just uh, getting ready for the future. We'll finish with Griffin Floyd. Hey, Trey, can you tell me a little bit about, um, or never mind, you said you're not saying what teams you're meeting with. All right, we'll go to Matt Ray. Hey, Trey, you've been talking to these teams for a little bit now, filling out the process, you know, what are you hoping to, to show these scouts that come to your pro day tomorrow? What are you hoping to prove uh, during that, that workout setting? Yeah, uh, I guess position drills, just body control. Uh, you know, well, good hand placement in the drills. And then, you know, just in terms of like drills, I'm an athletic per, uh, player, and I'm an explosive player as well. All right. Thank you, Trey. We'll have wide receiver Josh Palmer shortly. Thank you, guys. You're welcome.